internet friend welcome back to my let's play of legacy of Kane soul reaver so uh last time we got ourselves uh the ability to climb walls and we got a new stone glyph one thing i forgot to mention <clears throat> so the reason i think that that uh blacksmith and that forge was so significant is because uh Vorador was a blacksmith, and if you remember, I thought that that stained glass window represented the three pillar guardians that Vorador murdered. Um, I don't think that was intentional, but it could be. Who knows? It's hard to say how much of this game was all planned out, because Vorador wasn't revealed to be a blacksmith until, uh, I believe, Legacy of Cain Defiance, so... It, it's hard to it's hard to say but uh, let's let's see what uh, the elder god has to say about what we need to do next the canyons beyond the pillars expose an ancient blasphemy having devoured Zephon's soul you may now gain entrance where your path was formerly blocked basically we can access something now that uh, we have the ability to climb walls. Uh, I am going to take the long way around so that I can get to at least hit up at least one secret area before moving on. Okay, so you probably remember back on our first episode, I mentioned something about this wall and how it looks interesting. And that's because we can climb it. Get ourselves another life piece. Oh, and I haven't gotten that yet. So, while I'm here... And, uh, this should upgrade our health. Boom. Of course, uh, health in this part of the world. Oh, I'm in the deep end of the pool. I gotta get into the, uh, wading area. Yeah, I'm not a very good swimmer yet. All right, so now we're going to go back to the Sanctuary of the Clans, go to the room that has the Pillars of Nazgoth in it. The doors of the Sanctuary were immovable, either barred from the inside or rusted shut. I would need to find another means of entry. I totally forgot that that line of dialogue was there. I'm glad I tried that door. I don't know if this will be a 100% playthrough because there's definitely stuff in this game that I probably will miss. But I'm going to try to get as much as possible. Suckers. All right, here we are. Somebody gonna mess with me? Kinda sounded like that was battle music, but I guess I'm wrong. No, it's just playing the, uh, the theme. So, I didn't really talk about it before, but these are the uh, Pillars of Nazgoth. And I don't think they bothered to put the symbols on in this game. But uh, each one represents a different uh, aspect of, of magic and whatnot, with the center one being the Pillar of Balance. And you can see it's the only one that's kind of blackened, because that's the one that belongs to Cain, and it won't be restored until Cain is killed. But of course, these pillars will never be restored, because they're just completely and utterly destroyed. 
Uh, when Cain refused the sacrifice, the pillars just collapsed for reasons that will become clear in other games. But for now, uh, that's what you should. Uh, that's basically what we what we would know at this point. So let's see what Ariel has to say. Like a corpse in a shallow grave, corruption rises to the surface. Beyond these pillars, the defiled victim mutely screams its outrage. And that looks like a wall we can climb. And you could see she kind of showed you where you're supposed to go. It's just fun to walk around this architecture. And this is a ocular dome with no hole in the top. We got two doors. Huh. Well, we're going to try them both. Start with this one. Alright, so this takes us outside here. Let's see where the other one takes us. So this one... Okay, well, I have no idea which way I'm supposed to go. Let's jump down here and, and see what we've got. really dark in here. So we still haven't learned why Dumas children are scattered throughout the world. But we're about to meet uh, one of our other brother's children. The ancient tomb of the Seraph, once impenetrably sealed, now ravaged by Nosgoth's upheavals, its mysteries lay exposed. In the time of Vorador, centuries before Cain was made, the Seraphim warrior priests waged a merciless war against the vampire tribes of Nosgoth. Emboldened by righteousness, they committed unspeakable and indiscriminate acts of violence, massacring fledglings and ancients alike. They decimated entire bloodlines in mere decades. Now their husks lay here, murderers enshrined. So, yeah, the Seraphan were uh, sort of religious zealots. Uh, vampire kill killers who liked to uh, just indiscriminately kill vampires which yeah vampires you know it, it 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 always kind of weirds me out when they try to play that sort of um you know like oh vampires are uh, just like people or whatever and you shouldn't just indiscriminately kill them or whatever vampires eat people like <laughs> like if if something eats people you don't want them around you uh, you know we don't uh... ah here we go it's like we don't normally keep bears as pets like there are occasions where people keep bears as pets but um 
Of course, a bear won't eat people. Uh, a polar bear will, though. And, you know, we don't keep polar bears as pets. Uh, I mean, bears will eat people, but they don't. They don't go out of their way to eat people. Um, very few animals do, but... But yeah, if... Uh, I'm sorry, but... Um, whenever they try to equate... Uh, uh, killing indiscriminately killing vampires with uh, genocide or um, sort of racial prejudice I, I, I get a little bit of a I, I cringe a little bit because it's like no because vampires actually are dangerous to human beings <laughs> and they do represent a threat a forgotten history lies within know thyself though it may destroy you Oh boy. Hi! Hi, dude. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, um, you know, stuff like mutants and uh, aliens, using them for sort of racial metaphors makes a lot more sense to me. something that like actively has to consume human beings to survive maybe uh, maybe not so much I think vampires is a, is a metaphor for something else would be better as I pull the stone free a sigh of sepulchral air escaped the inner chamber. I was not prepared for what lay beyond this threshold. These crypts, defiled caskets of seraphim saints, bearing my brother's names and my own. The irony of Cain's blasphemous act rushed in on me with the crushing force of revelation. Were my hands not as bloody as these? Worse, I had spilled the blood of my brothers, these very comrades whose tombs lay ravaged before me. Yes, Raziel, you were a Seraphan, born of the same force that all but destroyed your race. Before the dawn of the Empire, you were chosen. Cain, Nosgoth's solitary self-declared monarch, plundered this tomb and raised you from these crypts. Breathing his vampiric gift into your defiled corpses, he resurrected you as his favored sons. So we've just found out that uh, Cain raised these Seraphan warriors uh, from the dead and turned them into vampires. And that's, that's how he got his lieutenants. And here's, this is my, this is my grave. Uh, this is Raziel's grave back when he was a Seraphan. Now you'll see Raziel you see Melkaya, you see Zelfon, who we just killed, you see Terrell, Duma, Rahab, all of his, all of Kane's lieutenants, and then you have an extra one here, Melek. Melek was a Seraphan who was actually a pillar guardian in Blood Omen. And the reason Melek doesn't have, uh, a corpse is because he was cursed after he allowed three of the Pillar Guardians to be killed by Vorador. Uh, because he failed, he was cursed 
to inhabit his suit of armor in, as a spirit rather than as flesh. So there really wasn't anything left of Malik other than just a suit of armor, um, which who knows where that is now. Um, Cain, I believe, had the helmet. Um, or was it the spear? I don't quite remember. Um, it was probably the helmet. Um, he was taking a lot of heads in that game. But, yeah. So, that's why Melek's tomb is here. But no actual casket. Because he didn't have a body to speak of. He was a spirit in a, in a suit of armor. But, uh, yeah. With nowhere else to go and the floor spiraling, I believe that the only thing we can do is sink down into a pit of despair. Don't you love when video games take their mechanics and mix it into the story beats, the story elements. I sure do. I love that. Hey, how's it going? They dance and sing like the diva from Fifth Element. I like that. Now I gotta figure out a way to enter the physical realm. There we go. Now we're about to meet um, one of Terrell's children. We'll talk about that after we have a little confrontation with him. Such loyalty to one who has you guarding this outpost like a chained dog. Do you prosper on the scraps he casts you? Your insults will do nothing to blunt the agonies of your demise. Cain killed me once. Behold the result. I have no more to fear from you. Yeah, he's, he's got some telekinetic powers that would be real nice if I could have them. What a pushover. and manipulate space. As your symbiotic weapon, the Soul Reaver is also thus enhanced. You may focus and project an orb of kinetic energy to strike objects that are otherwise beyond your reach. All right. So, you can just let off a quick blast, similar to Legend of Zelda again, and, or we can uh, aim it by holding the triggers down, pressing Y. Isn't it, isn't it nice that they put a little target on there so we know what to do with that? Isn't that nice? And this ends up just becoming a, a new fun way to do block puzzles. So here we go. What's in here? So let's take care of these 
tools real quick, and then we'll have a little discussion about Terrell. Okay, so that vampire we just fought is called a Terrellum, and Terrell was cut out of this game. He was supposed to be in uh, the Dark Eden uh, area of this game, and he was cut out uh, for, uh, you know, because they were running out of time to complete the game. And uh, essentially, you know, just like Dumas, uh, his followers are just sort of positioned everywhere uh, all throughout the world. And they are just below... Terrell was just below Raziel on the power level scale. Um, you know, Raziel was over 9,000, but uh, Terrell was maybe Vegeta, I guess. And he, he and Dumas are actually the ones who cast you into the Abyss, which uh, just goes to show you what kind of relationship they had. Um, but Terrell was cut out of this game. He does make an appearance in a later game, though, in uh, probably one of the most memorable parts of uh, Legacy of Cain Defiance. But uh, for the most part, we're just going to be running into uh, more of Terrell's minions as the game progresses mostly in out-of-the-way areas. But as you could see, he was he was a big, beefy dude. And uh, some people think that maybe that dialogue that Raziel says during that part uh, could have been from the confrontation with Terrell that was supposed to happen. And they just put it in right here because you needed, you needed some reason to get the... Uh, uh, you know, projectile uh, telekinesis. So, there you go. Looks like there's only one place to go here, which is down into the water. Which I believe I know where it's taking us. Of course, I could be wrong. <laughs> I thought I know where we were going. Again, the uh, sloshing around noises makes me nervous. Because I know what's coming. <laughs> So now I see this block here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I can't move it from this direction. There it is. I think that's. Okay. I don't think I have to go to the spectral realm for this part. All right, and here we are. Hey, dude, how's it going? Oh, you little. You're lucky there's a weapon on the wall. I would have been very angry. Got my Cobra Commander staff. Hmm. 
Well now. How's it going? Yummy, yummy souls. That one was mint flavored. Interesting. So, what do we have here? Some sort of Valkyrie riding on a decrepit crow. And I gotta be honest with you, I have no clue who these people are. I have no clue. I, I They're... Hmm. Yeah, no idea. No idea. Uh, this may have some significance if you know and you're watching this, let me know in the comments below. But personally, I think it's just a cool piece of artwork uh, with a warrior woman uh, killing a giant crow monster. <laughs> Maybe it had some kind of significance at one point. Either way, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to uh, destroy it. We have another checkered floor. Let's get one of these torches. probably wondering why I pick up weapons even when I have the Soul Reaver, and it's because one hit and it's gone, so it's hard to rely on it. And is that it? Is that, is that really all that's in here? Okay then. <laughs> All right, checkered floor. I have a feeling there is probably more in here that they cut out. Let's just uh, switch to the spirit world real quick, just to be sure. Oh wow, really running into a lot of these guys. like they're trying to make it harder as you go through the game. Yep, that's it. Let's see. Okay, good. So there's a portal right there, conveniently placed. Let's see what's in here. I think we've got another glyph in here. some more Torellum. Just like I said, they're going to be a problem as we go throughout the game. And they're not the only enemies with projectiles, mind you, but they are the ones that you got to worry about the most. Oops. 
I'm just gonna leave him uh, stuck like that, and then we're gonna go ahead. And you don't need the Soul Reaver to make these. Hmm. Or do you? Let's try it with the Soul Reaver. Nope. Huh, okay. So what do we do here? Are we even supposed to... Break that. I guess the answer is no. I thought you were supposed to break those windows. I mean, it seems like the video game thing to do, right? I'm probably thinking of another area later on. Oh boy, so these clan symbols belong to Rahab. We are entering Rahab's lair, I believe. Yes, we are. I recognize this boat. Here we are. It's a really interesting ship there. As you can see, it's got a uh, power up in the mouth there. Oh man, I, I really like the... Like even in a game as simple as this, there's some really great world building. It is so cool. I mean, granted, it's primitive. It's primitive. But I hope that even looking at this with your 2018 eyes, you can understand just how frickin' cool this all looks. Or how cool it looked for us back then. How just mind-blowing all this was. And of course, this right here is the only time you get this weapon. And there's like no enemies to kill with it. Um, at least not right here. And it's just a harpoon. Like, there's just a harpoon here. Like, they didn't have to do that. But, uh, here's what we're gonna do with this harpoon. Just so that we'll have it later. When we need it. So I stuck it in that wall over there. As you can see, the boat decides to creak at a at a shape there it would be cool if it was like you know rocking and floating but you know technology at the time was only was was limited so back and get that weapon. <laughs> Always thinking ahead.
a sanctuary against the vampire menace. This abbey has been drowned by the deluge spilling from this wounded land. Your brother Rahab and his brood, devastated even by the feeble rays of Nazgoth's sun, overcame their vulnerability to water and retreated from the surface. Now they haunt these ruins and glide in the darkness of its stagnant depths. Okay, so this is actually a very important area in uh, the Legacy of Cain series. This is actually where you end up in Legacy of Cain uh, 2 uh, at the beginning of the game. Of course, the water level isn't quite so high then, but... Uh, and I could be wrong about that. Um, there's a couple different cathedrals throughout the game series, but I do believe this is the one that you that ends up becoming kind of a hub world in Legacy of Cain 2. But right now, in this uh, ruined future, it belongs to Rahab because it's so full of water, and water is what he likes best. Okay, there's going to be some uh, water-dwelling vampires, and I'm not going to have fun fighting them. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, gave myself a little Duncan. A little Duncan the water there. Okay. There they are. There's one right there. You see him? Luckily, they are relatively easy to kill outside of the water. And sometimes you can convince them to jump out of the water at you, which is bad for them, especially when you're outside like this. I wish I would have gotten that on camera, but, uh... Yeah, he jumped out of the water trying to, uh... Trying to get me, and, uh... Didn't end well for him. Because he does not like the sun. Can I get up there, I wonder? Kind of looks like I can. there. Sucker. They're like ug ugly fish cobra men. They run around like spitting cobras. Spitting stuff at you. Because they spit. It's very uh, Castlevania. Uh, in other vampires, the fledgling ones don't like the sunlight, but with these ones, 
Uh, both of them, both varieties hate sunlight. See, this is one of the older ones. If we could get him out in the sunlight, you'd see. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So we got three possible routes. This is a dead end. Two possible routes. Don't you attack me. Don't you attack me. Yeah, that's right, you were intimidated, weren't you? You were intimidated by my soul reveriness. Um, I guess so. Chances are, the way this game's set up, chances are the other. the other way would have taken me in some kind of loop this area anyways so oh boy look at this it's kind of creepy in here I have a feeling some trouble. Game Master Paraptor Keyed. That's my name. Alright, well, you know what? I think we're going to go out on a high note. So, uh, next time we're going to delve deeper and deeper into the watery ruins here. And hopefully find my brother Rahab and uh, put an end to his miserable vampiric life. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, make sure you let me know in the uh, comments below or by liking the video, whatever. Uh, I'm feeling like calls to action aren't really uh, doing much for me, but that's okay. Uh, I have 170 of the coolest subscribers on YouTube, and I love each and every one of you, even if you never watch my stuff. So, uh, until next time, internet friend. Keep breathing them souls. Oh.